Jedi News interview, Mark Newbold interviews Stephen Stanton. Now that Tarkin is out there in the Clone Wars universe, what are your hopes for the character as we chart the path towards his appearance in A New Hope in Episode 4? Well, you know, I certainly hope to, to see more of, uh, you know, uh, the relationship developing between uh, both Tarkin and, uh, and Anakin. I mean, it would be, it'd be wonderful to, to see where that goes. I mean, I'd also, you know, just for myself as a fan, I'd love to see how he gets, to, you know, to be appointed to be uh, uh, in charge of the Death Star project. That would be a lot of fun, too. I don't know if Clone Wars is going to go in that direction. Yeah. But uh, from what I've seen of um, or from what I know of season four, you know, which is going to be uh, it's going to be a very uh, let's see. It's 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 an exciting season full of there's going to be a lot of battles, yeah. there's going to be a lot of uh, a lot of new worlds coming, coming, coming our way. And there's going to be the return of some. Of some bad guys that everybody likes, so cool. you know there's some good stuff in store. But um, so those evil you know, Ewoks that's... are going to turn up again, are they? Well, I don't know. <laughs> about that. I, I do know that the, you know they're they're really taking the show to a whole new level. I think that people that if if you haven't watched the show before yeah. and you were a fan of the Star Wars movies, I think it's it's a good time to start tuning in uh, yeah. with the next season and start watching it. Cause I think uh, people are just, they're just going to be knocked out by what they see. A question has just occurred to me and I'm going to throw it at you as a bit of a curveball. Tarkin mm-hmm. and Vader in, in the original star Wars, it, it kind of mm-hmm. comes across that Tarkin, well, in retrospect, you don't assume that Tarkin knows that Vader is Anakin. What are your thoughts on that? Do you think Tarkin knows that Anakin and Vader are the same person? Well, just, you know, from my own personal viewpoint, you know, not knowing where the creators of the show are going to take it. But just, as you said, in, in A New Hope, you've got that scene with, with Vader going into talking to talk to Tarkin in that uh, sort of conference room yeah. where he says, you know, I feel the, the presence of my old master. And Tarkin is the one who says, Obi-Wan Kenobi, mm. you know, surely he must be dead by now. You know, so he knows exactly who Obi-Wan Kenobi is and that he was Vader's master. So, I mean, there's got to be some, seems to be some knowledge there uh, of of who those two were together at, at one point. You know, I don't uh, I don't know the details, but uh, Tarkin seems to be the one that brings up uh, Kenobi's name. So there's got to be something going on, yeah. there, I think. I, I thought it was very, very clear in, in the earlier, the earlier parts of the Citadel trilogy when Tarkin and Anakin were talking, there was... Not not a not a huge age gap, you know. I think Tarkin's probably I would gather in his sort of mid thirties, and Anakin's probably in his early twenties. So you know, there, there's there's enough of an age gap, but they're kind of both been out there and they've been fighting and they've done their bit, and there did seem to be a, a definite connection, which I'm really curious to see how you and Matt Lanter managed to sort of play that out <laughs> over the next sort of couple of seasons or three seasons. However. Well, you know. One of the other things that he says to Vader, you know, where he's, where he's talking about, the, you know, the Jedi's, you know, light has gone out of the universe. And he says, you, my friend, are the last of that, that religi- religion, mm. you know. So he knows he's a Jedi. True, yeah. So that's, uh, that's an important point as well. Yeah. Know? Isn't it strange, though, that when Lucas wrote all these things, that, that 30 years later we would still be looking back at specific little lines and being able to read so much into it. Maybe he didn't even intend it at the time. Um, but but it's just played out so beautifully, isn't it, over those years? Oh no, I think it j- it just makes for a lot of fun, you know, to watch the films and the prequels and to start, you know, and working on the new yeah. stuff. You know, it just gives that much more fuel to the fire. Absolutely, yeah. Now, Tarkin isn't the only character you've portrayed on the Clone Wars. Could you tell us a little bit about the other roles that you've played on the show? <laughs> yes, well, of course, there's a uh, Masameda. You know, this is a crisis. <laughs> He's the the. Ch- the Chancellor's right-hand man, or whatever exactly Masameda is, he's he's up to no good in my book. I mean, the guy is, he's got some kind of agenda that I, I'm not sure what it is, but, you know, Dave Filoni's kind of, you know, when he and I have talked about the character, you know, so he's always kind of, you know, reminding me now. Remember, is always looking out for himself first, yeah. you know. <laughs> he will take sides wherever he thinks, you know, there's the winning team is. And then um, I also had... Uh, I had the uh, the pleasure of playing uh, one of the uh, uh, one of the members of the banking clan, uh, Mac Play, uh-huh. who's that very thin noon representative of the banking clan. He was a lot of fun. He's the one that's uh, you know giving out loans at very high percentage. Oh yes, rates yes, yes. <laughs> and giving people 
a hard time about uh, about that. And then I think one of my favorite uh, characters was the um, was the um, uh, in the uh, I think it was the bounty hunters. Yeah. The uh, character of Delani, you know, what? Why are we trying to do this? We don't. We are not <laughs> fighters. We don't know how to use weapons. Uh, <laughs> such a great character. Yeah, and the evolution of that was a, a little kind of interesting. Uh, when I got in the audition for that character, they had given me a voice reference of a of a specific actor, a celebrity. I won't say who yeah. he is. <laughs> and they said we would like this character to sound like this. But when I got to the session, they had, I guess they had had a creative meeting or something, and they had a change of heart, and they had somebody else in the room that was also doing a character of the same species, and they decided to go with, you know, can you change that whole thing that you auditioned for and got the job with? Let's just forget all that now that we're <laughs> the session. Can you do this instead right now? <laughs> it was like, okay, sure. Yeah. So, um, and I think, you know, he's, he's a kind of a fun character, and, uh, you know, I... I, I kind of hope to see the, those characters brought yeah. back again. It would be a lot of fun. But uh, yeah, so you know, and, and you know, I've, I've done a you know, Brother Viscous, uh, and um, I've done some you know, Death Watch Troopers and things like yeah. that. So yeah, there's been a lot of great characters that I've gotten to do on the show. Did it feel kind of inevitable to you though that Tarkin would be the character that would kind of propel you into the sort of into that sort of little Clone Wars stratosphere because obviously he's such a a known character. And the focus was on him so heavily in that Citadel trilogy and, and obviously again in season four. Did you kind of know that that would be the one that would sort of elevate it a little bit? Well, I certainly knew that that was going to be the one that everybody suddenly noticed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, yeah. it, because he's so he's so well known and he has I mean, let's face it, the first movie is really about, you know, he. Yeah. He is kind of the main bad guy. I mean, he's he's absolutely, uh, you know, he's absolutely despicable, <laughs> you know, in that in that. I mean, he's blowing up planets, you know, uh, just to kind of prove a point. Yeah. Uh, you know, he's he's really a, a not so nice guy. So to see him brought back, I think, you know, it was a major event. I was, I was so I was so uh, pleased to uh, to have booked the part and gotten the opportunity to play it. I, you know, it was of course even more pleased when I found out that it was a multi-story arc and that it wasn't just going to be one episode. Sure. So that was even, that was like, oh, you know, you couldn't, couldn't ask for anything better. Well, if you had to pick of any other character to play on the show, which one would you pick? Well, that's a hard question. I mean, there's so many great characters in the Star Wars universe. Um, uh, actually, one of the, I mean, if Prior to my my playing Tarkin, if you had asked me that question, I probably would have said, "Oh, Peter Cushing, you know, as as uh, as Grand Moff Tarkin, yeah. because he's got to be one of my favorite characters in the show." And I think you know one of the things that I like about Clone Wars, to be honest, is the fact that they create they keep creating new characters for me to yeah. do, and I really like that because it's it gets a chance gives me a chance to explore things that uh, you know cr- create new characters and come up with uh, new ideas and. Um, I really like that part of it. I, I like, as much as I like playing the, the classic characters like Masameda and, of course, uh, Tarkin, I really like the new characters yeah. as well. They're a lot of fun to do. Do you feel that, in, in that respect, you get to have, obviously the script's already written, but, but you get an element of input in the way that you interpret what's printed on a page to what comes out verbally and then moves on into being in the episode. Do you feel more of an input in an original character? I think yeah, I think there's there's definitely some of that because then I get to work with you know with Dave Filoni and you know kind of like uh, work it out and come up with uh, some ideas. You know, he definitely has his idea of what he thinks a character uh, uh, should sound like, and that's usually the kind of description uh, you know that uh, that you get when you get an audition sent to you. It's like here is this new character, and we feel that it is something along these lines. Yeah. You know, it's an older character, or it's. Uh, you know, a, a character that's very alien and doesn't sound human at all. You know, so you get to kind of like come up with new things and, and hopefully something that no one's heard before and hopefully something that's a lot of fun that people enjoy listening to. And something they make an action figure out of, which is always nice, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm waiting for that uh, Captain Tarkin action figure to come out. I can't wait to put that one up on my We show. all are. <laughs> Your, your Facebook page, it's taken off like a rocket, and you seem to really enjoy the interaction with, with the fandom out there. Do you get a kick out of conventions and, and, and those kind of appearances? Do you enjoy that? I do. I think that's, that is, that's really a lot of fun. Facebook is a lot of fun because I get to meet a lot of people uh, you know, all over the world. And then um, 
the conventions are great uh, just because I get to meet people in person, you know, and actually get to, you know, shake their hand. And I love uh, seeing the people that uh, that are into the costumes, you know, that come, you know, in full gear and armor and so on. They really put a lot of work into oh, those yeah. like stormtrooper outfits. And it's just it's so much fun to meet people and uh, to hear the stories about how, you know, the show is uh has entertained uh, them or in some cases changed their lives. And it's, it's, it's great to give out the autographs. That's, that's just a lot of fun, you know? So, and I've gotten autographs from some of the fans too, where I've asked for them, you know, <laughs> to sign a picture or, or stormtrooper trading card. Sure. So uh, we get, to, we get to share back and forth. That must be fun though. I mean, especially coming to it fairly fresh as well. And, and at such a ripe time for star Wars with so many things going on, it must be really interesting to, to, sort of be dropping yourself into there now it is i mean when i the the first big convention that i did was at uh in anaheim uh here in california yeah. and uh i mean it was from you know from morning until evening that i was uh, in my booth signing autographs and meeting people and i just never had so much fun before in my life and you know i've also done a star wars day at uh it, in Rancho Cucamonga, California, it was to raise money for the uh, the library and for the Children's Hospital of Orange County. Yeah. And uh, another great time. I went out there with my friends, Rick Fitz, who's from Star Trek, and Michael Gregory is another actor who's done things like Total Recall and RoboCop. And we just had an absolute blast. I mean, it was outside, and they had, uh, you know... <laughs> It was great meeting, you know, people dressed up as Darth Vader, Darth Maul. There was the Mandalorian, uh, you know, the uh, the Mercs, uh, the Stormtroopers, Shadow Troopers, you know, everything you could possibly think of, uh, you know, and meeting all the kids that came in costume, yeah. too. That was just uh, so much fun. Yeah. It was an absolute blast. Yeah, that's the great thing about the Clone Wars, I think, is that it's just brought in, being an old school fan myself, you know, it's just this Clone Wars are just brought in. I've got little nephews who are just mad about it, and I love it because... I live and breathe it. So it's just great that it's bringing in that whole new generation again. Oh, it is. And, you know, one of the things that I noticed, and I think I saw this first at the Anaheim convention, was I saw the people that were dressed up in the uh, the trooper outfits that were based on the CG characters from Clone Wars. So they didn't look like, you know, the photorealistic stuff for the movies. Yeah. They look, the, the, the costumes are painted and weathered to look exactly like sort of the the animated versions, which I think are absolutely stunning. The amount of work that went into that is just phenomenal. I, I think the guy that did that is, is here in Southern California. He's done an absolute uh, marvelous job making those things. A lot of love goes into them, I think. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what are the projects have you got lined up at the moment, outside of Star Wars? Um, outside of Star Wars, well... A lot of the stuff that I work on is, is, of course, it seems to be everything is top secret until it comes out like a year sure. later. But I have been working on things like, uh, you know, I've been working on the G.I. Joe Renegade series, playing the uh, the two, the evil twins, uh, Tomax and Zaymot. Uh, that's been a lot of fun to do that. I've got uh, Lego Hero Factory, where uh, I play uh, one of the, the Lego... Uh, robots, Jimmy Stringer, and as a matter of fact, Mark Hamill is in that series as oh, well. Cool. He's been playing characters a lot. He, he actually plays the bad guy. Uh, <laughs> in the first one we did, he was Von Nebula. And um, I've got a couple of projects that I'm working on with Disney. Um, one of them I'm really excited about. I wish I could talk about, but it's super top secret. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait for that one to come come out. And I am also working on uh, a series that's coming out, I think, later this year, the beginning of next year, called Doc McStuffins. And that's been a lot of fun, too. Uh, so, yeah, there's always a lot of good things in the works. Most of the things that I do that involve voice match and a lot of the animated series, everything is kind of top sure. secret until it comes out. And sometimes they change the name on me, and I'm not even aware that it's come out. <laughs> so it's like, oh, it's out? They changed the name. Okay, I have to go see I was going to say, I guess that must have happened. Do you think, oh, it's called this, and then something comes out, and, and it's called that, and you're the last one to know? Because <laughs> it's always the way, isn't it? Uh, yeah. That's absolutely happened on a number of occasions where, like, a feature film came out that I had worked on. And I had no idea. I kept waiting for it to come out under the original title that I worked, worked on it <laughs> under, and it never happened. They changed it. What are the hobbies do you have uh, uh, you know, away from your career? What what occupies your time? <laughs> um, yeah, that's a good one. Let's see. Besides from voiceover and voiceover and voiceover, um, one of the other things that I do is uh, uh, I love doing uh, stop motion. I, I had a uh, stop motion series up on YouTube yeah. for about a year called Government Issue Joseph. Uh, actually, I actually had quite a following in the UK. There are a lot of people there because I used the, the figures that I used in it were. Uh, 
here in the United States. They're called G.I. Joe. In, uh, in the U.K., they were made by Palatoy, and they're known as uh, Action That's Man. I, I, I took that series down uh, recently because uh, I'm working on a new project that's going to be taking its place. Oh, but I did cool. promise everyone uh, that was watching it that I would, that would, I would do a... Uh, uh, a series finale episode, yeah. and I've been working on that the past few weeks. I've actually been editing it, so that's going to be coming up. Uh, and, but uh, and it's called Government Government Issue Jedi. Ah, okay. I'm writing so, this down. You say I'm, I'm going to be looking this all up. So <laughs> yeah, no, I'll be uh, I'll be putting that up the link for that up on Facebook here. Uh, you know, probably in a few days or so. It's nice but, to hear uh, an American voice say Palatoy and Action Man because that is just the absolute <laughs> essence of being a, a kid of 40, <laughs> you know, playing oh, toys oh. in the 70s. So that that's very cool. <laughs> well, and of course, it was part of my childhood, too. I mean, G.I. Joe and the Adventure Team and all that stuff was, you know, I loved, you know, well, that was one of the places where I would practice doing voices as a kid. My brother and I would have had, you know, all these figures. And we used to make, you know, films with them uh, using my Super 8 camera. But, you know, those were all silent back in those yeah. days. So uh, Government Issue Joseph gave me a chance to go kind of revisit that scenario and give them all the voices that I had in my head. <laughs> You know, back in the days when I was a kid. So I got a great response to that. But that's, you know, that's, you know, either making films or, you know, voicing for films that pretty much that's pretty much what I've devoted myself to. I don't really have a lot of free time for anything else, but I, I'm not complaining because I love those things. I love doing stop motion. I love doing voiceover. Uh, I can't think of uh, a better way to have fun and to make a living. It's certainly paying off now, isn't it? So. Mm hmm. One final question before I let you go, because I know you must be very, very busy with the, with everything that's going on. The Princess Leia um, project that's going on at the moment that's getting so much attention. Yes. Tell us a little bit about that, because you're very involved with that at the moment. Right, yeah. Um, uh, the parents of little baby uh, Princess Leia, uh, Franny and Zev Eskenazi, are uh, here in Los Angeles. And baby Leia is at uh, UCLA Hospital, and she's had some medical problems that over 40 doctors uh, have been looking at and haven't been able to figure out. So uh, they're trying to get the word out and uh, also trying to raise money uh, uh, for the family because this has really financially devastated them. Yeah. Uh, the, the little baby has been in uh, the hospital now for like 55 days. Um, but the, a lot of the friends of the family and uh, people in the Star Wars uh, fan community and people like myself uh, that are involved with, you know, some of the shows like myself, Peter Mayhew, are getting involved in uh, spreading the word around to try to get as many people aware of the situation. We're trying to help raise money. They have uh, uh, some of the, the fans and friends. have They've got a prop auction going on. They've got a, a raffle. I think they've sold over 1,700 tickets for that. Uh, they've got a donation page where you can just, you know, go to PayPal and donate money. Uh, to the family to help with the hospital expenses. And you can read about what's going on, you know, day to day, like on the uh, the Princess Leia, the diaries. And I have the links to all those things, the the diaries and uh, the auction, the raffle. They're all on my Facebook page. If anybody wants to know more about them, they can go there. And, uh, you know, we're always keeping them at the top of the page, uh, keeping them current so that uh, people, it makes it easy for people to find. But I think it's really, it's really important to kind of get the word out uh, see if anyone out there, maybe there's another doctor that knows yeah. what's going on and can maybe help out in some way. Well, fingers crossed because it's 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 such a terrible situation and for the doctors not to really know what her condition is, it, it just seems so, um, without sounding too morbid, t so desperate that, that really is. hope I mean, that, yeah, somebody can... Yeah, I mean, we've, we've tried to contact people that we contacted the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and let them know about it and they've been in touch with the family and I have other friends out here uh, one of my agents as a matter of fact who contacted uh, a friend at the Children's Hospital of Orange County and you know so we're just trying to get the word out you know just trying to get people aware of what's going on and, you know maybe we're gonna maybe we'll find out what's going on and everything will be better yeah well let's hope let's hope uh, of all the uh, of all the fandom groups that uh, they've ever got behind charities i know that the sci-fi community has always always done that and uh yeah let, let's hope i'm sh I'm sure that uh, some good will come of it yeah and i mean the parents are both members of the 501st and the 501st is just yeah. you know they're absolutely super when it comes to stuff like yeah, this absolutely well thank you so much for your time Stephen. it's been an absolute pleasure oh it's been my pleasure mark it's been great talking yeah to you. and and thanks to uh, to your team there as well 
Oh. <laughs> Lord, <it's great. laughs> Say hi, everybody. Hi. <laughs> and I'm sure we'll meet at the convention sometime. I'm, I've got every every intention of getting over there for Celebration Six. So I'm sure we'll uh, oh, yeah. awesome. we'll have chance to meet. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, it sounds great. Fantastic. Thanks again. All the best. All right. You too. Talk to you Cheers. later. Cheers. Take Bye-bye. care. Bye.